This is the 79th episode of the Effective Executive podcast and YouTube channel. And in this episode, uh, obviously I have a little bit of a cold, but uh, I want to talk about the forgotten profit formula. And it's really simple. But before I get into that, uh, with all the stuff going on in the Ukraine, uh, I, there was something that came up that kind of goes back to a previous episode, episode 77, and that is uh, the sycophants and the glad handers portion where people, where ex executives or uh, people in charge don't listen to those around them uh, or are fed information that is rosy. And uh, it came out this week, and I think it was just a really good example of what happens when your uh, business becomes too authoritarian, uh, where people won't deliver bad news to you as an executive. And that is with uh, Vladimir Putin um, has now put in, apparently, house arrest, one of his spy chiefs or a whole series of people associated with misinforming him about how open uh, the Ukrainian people would be about a takeover by Russia and uh, supposedly the information he was fed by his spy chief was that uh, you know the, the Ukrainian people really wanted Russia to come in and take over because things were so bad um, and obviously now they're in the midst of a, a horrible war um, that they started and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> Putin was given bad information and yeah, they're paying a price with lives, which is much different than what a business would be. Uh, but uh, I thought it was a, it serves as a good example of what happens when uh, people are afraid to give you bad news or, or information that you don't want to hear. Uh, you have to, as an executive, make sure you're not getting... Uh, sm you know, smoke blown up, you know what, uh, by people that are afraid or want to be in your favor um, associated with some of the decisions that you make and some of the moves that you do. Uh, you need to be proactive in uh, seeking out uh, opinions that are uh, counter your own. And uh, this always uh, bears itself out well. But this week, I want to talk about the forgotten uh, profit formula, and it, and it really has hit me this week as I've dealt with uh, a series of uh, service companies that are just awful. I mean, it's just been I incredible. I'll get to those later. Uh, but uh, the, the, the forgotten profit formula is basically you got to innovate. There has to be innovation, and you have to have a good customer experience, and um Unfortunately, because of the focus on numbers in organizations, they forget that these are the two things that will prop up uh, your pro the profits in your organization, uh, not winning a hand-to-hand -hand combat battle uh, with a customer that can be a referral. And we'll get into some of the costs associated with that. But just briefly on innovation, you know, I've, I've always advocated that you need to have a constant proactive pipeline um, of innovation and products and services that, that you provide uh, to uh, current customers and future customers for that matter. And uh, uh, that, that these things uh, don't always have to be big ideas, uh, but you should have some big ideas. In other words, you can have some incremental uh, innovations, just people coming up with things. If you got people thinking, and they see that you're acting on some of the ideas that they have, um, then uh, they will continue to fill this pipeline because they know it's important to the, to the company. But, uh, but you should have um, a, a series of also very big ideas, things that, that couldn't be implemented uh, very quickly because it, it gets people excited about what your organization's trying to achieve and uh, it gets customers engaged. Oh, wow, they're, they're looking at these types of things. And I think that, you know, they may not all pan out, but uh, they can certainly help uh, uh, 
the enthusiasm around your organization, both internally and with customers. So uh, that's part one of uh, the profit formula. And to me, the second thing is the customer experience. And, uh, you know, I often hear people say under promise and over deliver. Well, I would say over promise and over deliver uh, if you can achieve something like that. And I think it's hard enough for many organizations just to uh, meet the promises that they that they give. And, and they always uh, or I shouldn't say always, but but more often than not fall short on that, which is tremendous opportunity if you're competing against people against organizations that um, are making promises and they have no chances of delivering um, because, you know, ideally you're going to, if you're delivering what at least you promised and then work towards over-delivering on that promise, um, what you're going to find is overall costs go down. Um, you don't have to market as much. You get referrals. And, and I think this is what a lot of the big companies, especially the ones that we deal with as consumers, are really missing. You go to a Comcast, you go to uh, an AT&T, any of these, they always seem to, to, to um, look at each thing as a, that one transaction. I've got to win that one transaction. Even if I rip the customer off a bit, you know, and there's a multiple ways that I'm experiencing right now about how they go about doing this. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll waive that. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. All you have to do is uh, sign this, and then you go back and you sign, and then they say, well, your contract says this, even though I said something else. And, and I think what's lost is nobody's ever going to refer. Unfortunately, don't have as many competitors in the business uh, to compete against these people, and the competitors that they have are just as awful. Um, so when you're in an awful industry... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take a lot to beat everybody else out. Um, and you can get referrals if you can actually uh, do things that you say that you're going to do. Um, uh, just in my Comcast experience uh, recently, you know, they uh, gave me a wrong date of when my contract expired. And then when it, after it had already expired, um, they upped the billing. Um, and I said, well, my contract doesn't end until the, you know, the 14th. Oh, well, that's wrong information. Well, you gave it to me. Um, and uh, so, so you get this kind of, I gotcha, you know, type of uh, scenario. And customers are just, you know, what winds up happening is they have to keep calling back. You know, are they going to um, uh, make this right? Um the, the information they gave me was wrong, but, but they'll always, what I'm finding is, is especially in this industry and with Comcast and cable and things of that sort, is that they'll say a lot of things um, that are untruthful, um, but they'll always point back, well, you signed that contract, so therefore, um, whatever we said, what, you know, doesn't matter. Um, and that's the point of calling in. So you wind up calling back, that costs more money. Uh, you talk badly about them, they wind up switching. That costs me money to switch. Um, you're never going to refer any of these companies because they're so awful um, that if somebody actually did want to stand out, and I've worked with telecoms all over the world, it's very easy for you to take just a, just a small step to deliver on what you say that you're going to do. Uh, we'll fix that billing, uh, you know, in the next five days, five business days, and then two weeks go by and the billing isn't fixed. And, you know, then you switch and then you got to pay these fees. And, you know, it's all very um, wasteful. Uh, and I hate to see waste in organizations. And America seems to be the pinnacle of some of this crap uh, that goes on in the customer experience. Um, got another situation with uh I've still this goes on for the last three years one of my earlier episodes with a company called Hoosier Contractors you know I've gone through and uh you know they awful service as far as the, the sales part was great which you always find um uh, but the operational part of you know fixing the roof they they wrecked my gutters they left trash all over the place they left pallets uh of uh their materials sitting in 
front of my garage for uh, months, not not just a few days, but months. And I so finally I had to move it uh, in order to to get uh, my car out. But uh, uh, it's uh, this types of type of stuff where they just say, well, you gotta you gotta pay. Um, no matter how bad it is. And I, that's just not my, going to be my nature. Um, so, so we're battling over that at this point. Um, you build, deliver bad service, at least make good on it. The, the, the Hoosier contractor CEO, basically, who I, I tried to communicate on a number of times, oh, we'll make the gutter right and we'll do this. And he hadn't done it, but he wants his money. Um, and uh, I'm not going to give it to him um, unless forced to. Uh, so that, that's kind of the, the scenarios you run into. I'll never um, uh, give this person a referral. I've told 100 people at least about how bad this, this service is. Whenever I see their sign up somewhere, uh, I make sure to stop by and say, you know, don't, don't use this particular service. Um, so anyway, it costs more money to give bad service or not go do right by a particular customer. And I think the problem is, is most uh, service organizations and, and manufacturers too, because they have service sides of, of them. They don't take the time to go through and figure out what does this look like from a customer point of view? What does it mean when I break their gutter and I, I leave trash behind and leave pallets of information? It, it's, it's all waste. Um, and not to be able to apologize and say, look, well, let's, let's make this right. This thing could have been resolved uh, uh, three years ago. <laughs> this person uh, you know, reached out. But no, they're not, they're not going to admit any uh, wrongdoing or failure because I, I don't know if it makes them think they feel weak or, or what it is. But it's ridiculous. You know? it's, cost, it's cost them money uh, and time. Um, they'll never get a referral. Uh, there's a series of people just like me, uh, whether it's Comcast or Hoosier Contractors, whoever it is, that you know that they're going to have to overcome this. Um, so bad service costs you in a lot of ways, um, you know, in an organization. And if you're one-sided on on what you think is happening, and I don't know, well, maybe this these CEOs think that. You know, they're winning, but they're not. Um, and, and unfortunately, like I said here in the States, your, your two biggest are uh, Comcast and AT&T, and they're both awful. I mean, they're literally, there is opportunity everywhere for a competitor to step in. And uh, they could capture the market, you know, pretty easily using some of the uh, techniques that I have. I mean, uh, you know, if you get people walking away saying, boy, that was a great experience, I've never felt that way when dealing with a, a cable company or um, the, you know, many other services that are out there. There is huge opportunity. Um, so anyway, that's what I want to cover this week, this forgotten formula, profit formula. People get caught up in trying to hit their numbers and uh, see, make sure I win that transaction over that customer. Because even if I rip them off a little bit, I got a little bit more money for my, my company. But in the long run, you're just hurting yourself uh, as an organization. And uh, I think that uh, the more competitive that your industry is, the, you're going to have to sharpen this. Something's going to happen, I think, with cable companies. I think it's already happening uh, where they're going to start losing business uh, to other to new technologies, new things that are coming out and, and so forth and be uh, easier to do. I look at Starlink or whatever that Elon Musk has. He rolls that out. I think a lot of these companies probably go away. Um, but anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to cover this week. Catch you next week.